making a video and I ran into this little maintenance issue on the Mazak and I thought I'd just make a little very short video of that. It's, uh, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of things you run into all the time. Running CNC equipment, you have to, you come in and power the machine up in this case and I have this low battery alarm that, uh, I don't know, it's, it's kind of like aggravating. You can't run the machine. Well, actually with this alarm, the machine will run, but you got to do something about it because if you lose power to the machine or you power the machine down, it, it may not come back up. It might lose things in the parameters of the, in this case, the servo drives on the, on the tool changer were the issue. But I wanted to explain something else too about the reason I haven't made videos. I haven't made a video or um, uploaded a video in probably three or four weeks. And uh, the reason being for that is because I got this COVID uh, whatever sickness it is. And uh, it took me about three weeks, two and a half, three weeks to just get over that. And then I had to come back to work. And uh, well, first you have to get a test and prove you don't have it before you can come back to work. Uh, there's a lot of, I, I don't want to go into all these political issues on that, but anyway, I came back and I had to get caught up with things that fell behind because of that. And I was making this video, as, you'll, as I mentioned, in the, the section of this video on this maintenance issue about uh, this um, shaft thing that I'm turning on the lathe. And I ran into this problem. So I just wanted to mention that. And like I said, I'm over that now. And so things can kind of get back to a little bit of normal. So that's the reason that I wasn't posting any videos for a while. I just didn't feel like it. That, that, that um, stuff makes you feel real worn out and tired and you just don't feel like doing anything um, at all. In fact, in my case, I, I didn't feel like eating anything or doing anything for about a week and a half. And I'm not saying it was that bad, but I don't want to go through that again. So that's where that's at. And I am working on another video on this shaft thing, it's, but it's kind of a video that is, um, it may not be totally, it's not going to get a lot of views and stuff because it's a, I'm showing um, what I did with the CAD and the CAM and, and those videos are interesting to some people and people in the comments that have asked me to make videos like this, but um, in a general, you know, getting tons of views. You know, it, it, they generally don't do that good, but I still want to make videos like that because I think it's important to show those things. So that's really what my next major video is going to be about is showing the turning of, of this, this part right here and what I do to, um, with the initial CAD model. The customer provided a CAD model in this case. And, and then uh, what I do to that how I get it ready for the cam software and do the um, cam thing. It, it might take two or three videos to make this thing. I don't know yet. Um, I'm, or I could just make a video on doing the first end of it, but I want to show that the second operation as well, where it has a little bit of milling. This part is mostly a lathe part, so that's what that's going to be about. But like I say, this, I'm going to show in here in this little video. I made this little quick video. I just handheld the camera and, t and walked around the machine showing a few things. It's not going to be a real fancy edit or anything like that, but it just shows some of the things you have to go through. This is kind of like running CNC equipment. You always, um, I mean, I wish I could come in and just run the machines, and most of the time you can, but there's days when you come in and something happens, like uh, you get this alarm and you got to figure out what's wrong with that and clear that out or, you know, or, or order parts to fix it or whatever. Uh, particularly with this older equipment, I mean my, my MASAC was built in 2006. My horizontal mill was built in 1999 I believe was when it was built so you know these older machines require more maintenance issues and of course I, I talk a little bit about the chip conveyor issue on this uh, MASAC here. So let's get to that video and you can see what's happening with that. All right, I was uh, making this video on, on uh, this part here in the roughing and I've got to shovel these shavings, unfortunately, out because the chip conveyor still isn't functioning. But when I turned the machine on this morning, 
I don't know if you can see that, but I got this low battery alarm. Now, typically in, on the Mazak, what low battery can mean is uh, one of three things. It can mean there's low batteries in the control, but I just replaced them here recently, so I know it's not that. Or it can be these servo drives on the, on the um, let me get a light. Can't really see it here very well. Okay. Here is one set of servos. The, the, the servos mostly on the tool changer can give you these issues. And the, um, see if I can hold this. So this, this drive, these are the two drives for this end of the tool changer for the, this is probably for the arm and this is probably for what they call the carrier, which is, a, um, I don't know if you could see it, maybe. There's a, there's a ball lead screw that pulls, runs the tool from what they call the shifter, which is over behind there. You can't see it. Maybe I'll show you from the other side. And it runs it up to the arm, which is, maybe I can get up in here, is right in there on this machine. I don't know if you could see that or not, but anyway, so these servo drives, there's four servo drives on this tool changer, and these two apparently are all right. They're not showing an alarm condition. The batteries, let me see if I can take this off, are right here. You can see that little battery there. That backs up the, um, the parameters of the servo drive. There, there's, these servos have, have um, what you might call uh, absolute position or, uh, encoders. So once you establish the zero points and the end points and everything, you don't have to continually zero return the um, drives for the tool changer. They just automatically in the right places when you power up. So the other two are in the back of the um, machine here. Which is in here. Now don't get all excited. I know you safety people. I'm gonna come go in the machine here and uh, this machine can't move with those doors open and even if somebody tried to jog it with the doors open, it can only go at 78 inches per minute. So it would leave me plenty of time to move and also, I, it, only, it can only go up this far, so I could move up into here if I had to. But these, these two servo drives, let me turn the light on, so we can see them. Here are the ones, see that's, that's one of the motors that turns the, the, um, the magazine. And this is a shifter device over here. I don't know if you can see that. And that thing goes back and forth and that arm there carries the tool over to the carrier on this tool changer. So it's the way this thing works. So on this one, these two batteries, I don't know, it's kind of dark back here, this light, but there's a battery here and a battery there. And if I turn this light off, you can see that these, these two, uh, servo drives are in the alarm state. So I changed the batteries out, put new batteries in. Fortunately, I can get these at uh, interstate battery here, the battery type. I had to change the, um, I, I can get them with the proper connector and everything for here. That'll connect right up to the servo drive, but for some reason today, they didn't have those in stock, so I had to buy the same battery and then I had to change the connector with these little um, so, um, well, solderless heat shrink things. I don't know what they're called, but I, I bought a, a bunch of those for the truck when I was working on the truck. Sorry about this light. I can't really... Anyway, I changed those two batteries and like I said, if I turn this off, we can see we're still in the alarm state now. My Mazak maintenance guy that I deal with. Here's the lead screw up for the Z-axis. Give you an idea of scale. So there's my hand. 
holding around, I would say this is about three inches in diameter. This is the Z, the Z way. There's three tracks on this machine, three um, linear ways. The, the furthest one, I'd say these are about, I don't know, they're over four feet apart. Then there's one in the middle. So it's pretty substantial. So now, my Mazak maintenance guy anyway, going back to that, says that I gotta power the machine down to get rid of this alarm. This is a little bit nerve wracking to me because with a low battery alarm, I don't really like to power the machine down and find out that I screwed up, but that's what he said to get rid of the alarm state. I gotta power the machine down. So here we go. Let's see what happens. Hopefully, I measured the voltage on the batteries and they seem good. Hopefully this one will come back on and won't have a problem. There's also another battery in the Mazak, one of these bigger Mazaks, they have a, um, a location sensor on machines this large. Any of these larger Mazaks, I'm gonna power it back up here and see what happens. Any of these bigger machines that are capable of making um, armament, I guess, because they're large enough to do that, like uh, gun uh, cannons and big caliber guns and things like this, I guess. I guess this is what they do this for. For security reasons, they want to know the locations of all these machines. And uh, this machine falls into that category and it has a I don't know, it's like a GPS location sensor maybe, and if you move the machine more than a certain distance, you have to reset that thing, and only Mazak can do that. They have special codes, and there's a battery in that thing that's, that you gotta be careful to disconnect it and re, reinstall a new battery while the power is on, or you have to get with Mazak to get the new codes. So there's a, uh, there's batteries in these servo drives to back up the parameters. There's batteries in the PC itself, which are these like flat lithium batteries. There's three of them, I think, in there. And there's batteries in that um, location sensor for these larger machines. They don't do that with the smaller machines. This, this larger um, lathes and, and maybe milling machines. This machine, they do have that thing in it. So. You gotta deal with that. Let's see what happens. Hopefully we come back with no alarm here. I'm gonna release emergency stop down here. And as you can see, this is like a normal PC, um, IBM type PC, although kind of an industrial version underneath this uh, Fusion 640M Pro control, which is the, the five axis version of that because this machine, of course, is five axis controls. Plus the, plus actually the four more axis in the, in the tool changer, but you don't mess with those. Good, awesome, it came back with no alarm. Perfect. I was kind of worried about that. You know, in, in the case of a, having a battery alarm, every time you power it back down and back up, you could lose things if the batteries don't back it up. So now, I got to reassemble these covers and uh, get things going again here. This is the kind of things you run into with the uh, CNC equipment all the time. Come in and something doesn't work exactly right, it's got to be adjusted. Still got to deal with this chip conveyor business. I've kind of disassembled this thing, trying to figure this out. Here, this is the, I took the cover off of here and the top cover here and, and uh, I don't know. This can be taken out. If I take all of this mess, if I clear all this mess out in front of the machine, I can uh, then pull the whole coolant tank out this way and, and lift it, it will lift it with the crane out of the coolant tank. This chip conveyor sets in the coolant tank, so it's not really like one piece deal, but you can see how long it is. It, it must go 
Oh man, I don't know, that must be pretty near uh, 20 feet long. Somewhere the chain, or the, the belt, I guess you might say, is hanging up or jamming. Uh, somebody sent me pictures on the internet about theirs and, and where it makes a turn and goes back around, it wears out the, there's little tracks that these uh, bearings on the sides of the belt run in and it wears those out and it can't make the turn or it gets jammed in that turning spot. It'll move back and forth about four or five feet, but it stops either side of that. So that's gonna be a big deal to do all that. And while I have it out, I can clean out the coolant system and everything, which is a major undertaking in itself. In fact, in my coolant and whey oil and everything in here, maybe you can see this if I can show it to you. See all this whey oil? And if I reach down in here, there's like shavings. Uh, so this is a major deal I need to do something about. I've been really lazy about this. Haven't been doing the proper maintenance on that, which I guess I'm paying the price now for that. So I gotta get this shovel in these. And then uh, I was making the video on this part Kind of a long video about programming and, and turning this part and uh, then I gotta set the camera up to do the finish to film the finish cuts of this.